to see you. Hello, welcome in the audience. Welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program an old and very, very dear friend of mine and very much part of the world, and that's me, Trudy L. Mason. And she's been on the scene, as it were, in New York City and the world, uh, both politically and also particularly, I think we're going to find, in, uh, in the interest of uh, feminism. Uh, hum, uh, the human rights of the female contingent of the human society, and she's a she's a stalwart member, uh, known to m many. And Trudy, welcome so very very much to conversations here. Uh, what is it? It's now uh, April five of the year two thousand and twelve. Welcome. Well, thank you, and it's good to be back again. Yes. Because I've been here a couple of times yeah. on various issues, and it's always so much fun to chat with you. Yeah. Harold. Yeah. Well. Okay. Good. Now, share with you've got a really I've got a little brief. Be a bio, but share with us a little bit of your education. Born and raised, a little of that, and then we're going to wade into some of the issues. And you have a badge that says, "Where are the women?" I would like to get one of those at some time. I don't know if I got any chance, but tell, wade in, wade in. And, well, uh, before tell us anything where you else, born and let me. Get, I just happen to have one you in my pocket for you, okay. and I'd love you to put it on. I will I'm be talking. pleased and proud to because do it. As we were talking, you are a feminist, even though you happen to be of the male gender. Uh -huh. There are many males who are feminists, just like there are many women who are not feminist. It's not What's just the by gender. Of a feminist? Oh, they I don't, don't know. Have a a, woman, right? uh, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, <laughs> well, there. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, at any rate, yeah. uh, what do you what do you want to know? Well, well I, think I want you to were, know. Born and raised. Where were you born and raised? I was Education. Born, yeah. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was lived in Brooklyn until I was ten, and uh -huh. then typical upward Jewish mobility. Yeah. We moved out to Queens, okay. to Whitestone, Queens. Right. Uh -huh. I went to New York City Public Schools. I went to Bayside High School, uh -huh. and then I went to Wheaton College in Norton, Massachusetts, which was the oldest women's college in. Uh, in New England until they went co-ed, and I don't even want to get into that. Was that I'm was that up in that area around Amherst? In that, no, it's the... it's closer. No, it, it's actually very near to Boston and to Providence. Actually, 15 miles from Brown uh -huh. and uh, 35 miles from Harvard. Is if you want to so, get the yeah. the <laughs> yeah yeah no, the I, Ivy I, League. Got, uh, I want to get it sort of let's say uh, in terms of education. We we have uh, you know uh, we Exeter and prep schools for men. You know or yes, Eden and Harrow. Yes in England. Is and it one of the prep schools for women? Or no, no. Not? Or do, we, a, do we have that for women in terms one, of higher education? Uh, well, the way now, we have, do you understand what I'm saying? I do, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Now we do. There mm. were, yes, there was Miss Porter's where okay. some, someone like Jackie Kennedy went. Uh -huh. There were various schools. There were actually, we still have some single sex um, Prep schools. Prep schools, yeah, yes, right, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and we still have some women's colleges which stayed as women's colleges, unfortunately. My alma mater, which I still love because yeah. I got the most wonderful education. Okay, yeah. And uh -huh. I mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to go there unless they had given me a lot of scholarships oh, I see. because okay, I'm yeah. a kid from, from Brooklyn from and Brooklyn. Queens. Born in Brooklyn. You're not from the manor born. No, no, I was actually born in Brownsville. <laughs> okay. So I always say I'm a kid from the slums right, right. who grew up. Good. But um, but Wheaton gave me some wonderful scholarships, and I always try to raise money for Wheaton also. Good for so you. So there can yeah. be others. But yeah. I am a firm believer, uh, the women of in the 60s and the 70s yeah. especially, many of the women who are leaders in industry and politics in in government in in all of the professions are the products of the women's colleges the are seven they really, sisters yeah, yeah. Uh, Gloria well, what about Steinem? all the co-educational colleges uh, that women do go to? Now, yeah. now, yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about uh, when the feminist okay. movement and yeah. when we really got started what is called the second wave if uh -huh. you take that uh, Susan B. Anthony yeah, and Elizabeth yeah. Cady Stanton, yeah. etc., were the first wave. Then the second wave were people like Bella Abzug, Gloria Steinem, Betty Friedan, yeah, and yeah. going on. And Kate we, Millett? Kate Millett, yeah, absolutely, yeah, she was a heavy absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. But this is all the. This was be the second wave. I'm uh -huh. part of the second wave, second wave, and that was in the '60s and the and the '70s, really. That's right. And um, it's interesting. And isn't women it? also getting into politics mm -hmm. and into people like my mentors, people like Bella Abzug, with and the hats. Bella with the hats, and Shirley Chisholm. Mm -hmm. 
Who, she ran for president. She out of Texas. ran for president. No, yeah. she ran for president out of. She comes from Brooklyn also. Did not she, from well, Texas. Why do I have a place? To because Ann Richards, who was another, who was yeah. governor of Texas, and still who was, reported as mom. Ah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And who was a very close friend of Bella's. And it, yeah, yeah. I wish I had had tape recorder with yeah, me yeah. when the two of them got together. I'll and bet just that would have been something. It yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's in my it's in my brain. It's like in an my, atomic explosion. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, it's uh, a proud tradition, but yeah. it's a very proud tradition. Yeah. But we still keep it going yeah. today. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, we are getting a lot of setbacks, and that's why hmm. I have now made this button to with my friend Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, yeah, yeah, who Carolyn, it is yeah. quoting, uh -huh. because at the so the hearings on. On the uh, on contraception yeah. after the president unbelievable 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 but the what absurd. it was yeah, share was it, that share it. was yeah. that uh, when they have congressional hearings mm -hmm. on on bills or on proposals mm. what have you yeah. uh, they always the majority which unfortunately are the Republicans now in Congress yeah, are allowed moment, to yeah. put in or not allowed it's sort of it's not written in the rules, yeah. but they usually have four of the five speakers because they have a lineup. If you've ever seen congressional hearings yeah. on television, yeah. you'll always see they don't just have one person testifying. They'll have five yeah. together, and it's the first wave. Yeah. And to, well, to make a long story yeah. short, yeah. they said that there was no woman who was professionally capable of speaking because this was not about women's health or contraception yeah. it was about church and state yeah, and religion right, right, and right. so they brought five men <laughs> and congresswoman maloney and congresswoman eleanor holmes norton yeah. got up and yeah. said where are the women ah, and good. the chair of the committee said there was no woman who was qualified uh -huh. to speak and yeah. in which case they said any woman would be more qualified than any man you have here. Yeah. And they said again, where are the women? And yeah. then walked out. Yeah, and yeah. And so with my friend, Congresswoman Maloney, yeah. who was a uh -huh. dear yeah. friend for yeah, many I know, years, I know. Yeah. we put together, we came up with the idea, and she asked me, since I collect political campaign buttons. You're going way back, cause, you tell me, yeah. I go way back. We can talk about that in yeah. a minute. But we came up with this button, which now uh, almost every woman and many men in Congress who feel the way we do, and state committee people at the Democratic State Committee meeting two weeks ago, mm -hmm. everybody proudly put one of these on. Yeah. Because when you wear a button like this, just like previous buttons that tell a story, yeah, you can true. have a chance when you came up to me and you said, what does this mean? Yeah. And it means this is right now talking about the fact that there is a war on women. Uh -huh. Again, there was a button, one of my earliest story buttons yeah. said 59 cents. Do you know what that was for, Harold? I have no idea. No idea. And you are very knowledgeable. Okay. Well, I yeah. would wear, there's a lot to know. I would wear that button yeah. because back in the 70s yeah. when the women's movement got started right. and with now, mm -hmm. for every dollar that a man earned, uh -huh. a woman in a comparable position earned 79, uh, 59 cents. I presume you saw the recent Time Magazine uh, uh, issue where it says women are now earning more than men. No. Is there that, are am I reading some that wrong? women who are now, we still have most corporate CEOs, there are some women who have now risen to positions, but they are not earning more than men in a comparable position. I think it's now up. I just heard on Morning Joe this so morning the, one, the, of your, the one of your competitors, Monika mm. uh, uh, Brzezin uh, yeah. was yeah. talking about. Big uh, No, his daughter. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. His yeah. daughter yeah. is the co anchor with Joe Scarborough. Oh, okay, that's right, that's right. That, Morning yes. Joe, yeah. Morning On Joe. On CNN or something. And it said that women earn $350 a month. Oh, God, I, I wrote it down, but I have it in my bag. Well, in just the get other the one. pattern. But it's basically $350 a week less than men. Well, what was and the thrust of that Time article? The you Time article was saying that women 
there are now women who are CEOs and CFOs who earn more than men because they are in these high positions, but there are so few of them. Well, you read that article tokens. differently than I did. Well, I read that being that across the board, they are now becoming the no, major women breadwinners. Women are now becoming the major breadwinners yeah. because more men are out of work, because women are still in lower paying jobs and get paid less. So they are the breadwinners for their family because mm. their husbands are out of work. Uh, well, but in okay. mo yeah. mm. but and also so many more women are forced to work. But and on this be the that issue they were hearing it the issue was on birth control and uh, 80, 90 percent of the women now are using some sort of birth control. Well that's and why these, people, this, these deluvians are trying to say well, that go goes against the law of God or something. That's and the abortion issue is still there. Well you know? we don't call it the abortion issue. We, we don't? call it a woman's right to choose. Oh, right, right, right. Because uh, it is to choose it's a very whether, important issue, whether yeah. or not I want, well, or I... Or to use, this was to use birth control uh, this for was, out loud. And this a, was to be, if, if health insurance pays for Viagra... Yeah. Right. <laughs> shouldn't it pay for? Shouldn't it pay for uh, birth control pills? Well, I think this, can, this issue concession? can be. I think this issue can be seen across the political spectrum between Democrat and Republican. We're coming to an election. I think they're going to lose a lot of votes. Whoever's going to back that well, Republican-based right view of the thing is that. But the women are going to be a major defining factor in terms of this. And most um, women across the spectrum are not going to go along with the idea that they can't have access to uh, well, birth, there uh, birth is, measure, there uh, is measures. always something called the gender gap, which is always in favor the of the The women always vote differently, or but, on the whole, but they do. You, but I will tell you something yeah. else, though, that you cannot generalize about women. Because may I point out uh -huh. that Sarah Palin is, is a, a woman, woman. Yes, that's and true. Michelle Bachman is a woman. Yeah. And I could go on and on and on. Well, I disagree so we with can't you that. generalize I think, no, about No, I think you can generalize. Just like we can't generalize about men because as I said some of the greatest feminists I know you were reading before my, my yeah your little bio is well, very it's succinct in it's this very good this wonderful this wonderful it's not just it's I am very proud to be included in a wonderful book called Feminists Who Changed America that's right congratulations and there yeah. are biographies uh -huh. of men in that book uh -huh. also because there are men just like during the civil rights movement which I am also proud yeah. to be a part right, of right. that I was of, and still am. Because did you go we, down? Did you were you a freedom writer or anything? Like, were you that I was, or, or Yes, I was that era, and I era, was. But also, did you actually travel? Yes, I was, and the first time I was arrested was traveling with a group called the NSM, the Northern Student Movement, which were the partners of SNCC. Everybody yeah. knows SNCC. Did you know but, Stokely? Did I, I? I had. I've met him. I he do was know a John. dear friend of mine. Well, I know I John love Lewis, Stokely who is now a congressman. Yes, indeed, he's still and, in the Congress. And there were yeah. so many others, but actually, um, that was part of that story. It wasn't It was uh, who wrote Soul on Ice. Um, uh, oh, Eldridge Cleaver. Eldridge Cleaver, yeah. who still who yeah. said something that I quote all the time, Where's and that? when I'm teaching yeah. in Soul on Ice, he wrote. If you're not part of the solution, part of the you're problem. part of the problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that is something that yeah. I strongly, strongly believe. And yeah. that's why I yeah. am still doing it. You said yeah. to me that you can't believe that I'm still doing all of this with No, what energy. I couldn't believe is when you, I don't want to reveal you your age. You can say it. I am very proud. How old do you think this woman is? My guess was about 40, <laughs> maybe 35, 40. And I find out that I'm off by about 100% or something. I can't believe On it. June 27th, oh. which is also Emma Goldman's birthday. God and you know Emma. who Emma Goldman is. Yeah. That's why I'm so proud. Yeah, yeah. Who said, it's not my revolution unless we can dance. That's right. If, uh, no, if, uh, I, unless if I can't dance, you can keep your revolution. revolution. Okay. Coca it's Crystal been, used to have a program on oh, that okay. title. I, yeah. I, it's been yeah. said an in so many yeah, different yeah, ways. She, yeah. But she was also, uh, Maureen Stapleton played her in the movie Reds yeah. and won yeah. an Academy Award I know, that was for doing that. Yeah. But uh, on June 27th, I will be 70 yeah. years old. Oh, you should. What do you do? What do you do? Um, I mean, nothing, do you do and I've never had, and people say, who, I've never yeah. had 
first of all, I Good, don't like injections. Living. I don't, maybe not so clean. All right, <laughs> we we'll didn't go into that on television but, here. But, in but, your own but interest. this is what, I will quote my friend Gloria Steinem, yes. who no, makes no bones about mm -hmm. the fact that on March 25th, she turned 78. Yeah, and, she's getting contemporary And with actually, me, yeah. we had a wonderful event right before her birthday at yeah. a group that I'm involved with called The Common Good, uh -huh. started by another wonderful woman, my friend Patricia Duff. Okay. And yeah. we showed Gloria's movie and then had a conversation uh -huh. where she spoke about all the issues that we're talking about today, but so much more eloquently than I ever can. Yeah. And Gloria... Yeah. Gloria's birthday was she March 25th, and she turned figure, yeah. 78. Yeah, God bless you. When yeah. Gloria yeah. was yeah. 40, uh -huh. she had a birthday party, uh -huh. and she and everybody said, you can't announce that you're 40. This was way back during the time when you couldn't even trust anyone. We were all told, don't trust anyone over 30. And all of a sudden, we all turned 30, <laughs> and then we all turned 40. <laughs> and, <laughs> at the, and at the party, she got up and she said, Everybody tells me I shouldn't say that I'm 40 because I don't look it. Yeah. Well, this is what 40 looks like. Yeah. And 10 years later, she had a much bigger well, what birthday. Is she, what do you, what's the, oh, she just this, put her set, this, oh, this, yeah, okay. this is what <laughs> 70 or almost 70 in yeah. three months right, looks right. like. Yeah, okay. right, right. And then when she turned 50, she mm. had a much bigger party for the Ms. Foundation, uh -huh. which she had started, yeah, because yeah, you know, yeah, she yeah. started yeah, yeah. Ms. Magazine. Yeah. And she got up and she said, everybody, I never repeat myself. I never say or write the same thing twice. Uh -huh. I never plagiarize, but this time, I'm going to make an exception yeah. because she stretched out her arms yeah. and the whole ballroom of oh, 350, 400 Big, people yeah. shouted yeah. out, this is what 50 <laughs> looks like. Yeah. So I have always said right. when people say, yeah. but don't say it, you don't yeah. look it. Yeah. I would rather say, I'm going to be 70 yeah. and have mm. people say, oh, but you don't look it, then say, I'm 50, and everybody say, who does the old broad think she's kidding? So how many times have you had plastic surgery, and Never. how do you do it, you know? Never, no? and no. I will not use Botox, because I do not want anybody <laughs> either sticking a needle into my face or cutting into my face. I understand. And all the wrinkles I have are uh. very well earned. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations so, on so, that, uh, Anyway, yeah. but... Uh, but it, it, well, we can I was, have I was, another conversation about that. I was from that. Detroit. My dad was a lawyer and everything like that. And then um, he, we were Ann Arbor, you know, the uh, University of Michigan. Yes. He was in class of 26. I think in his class was uh, one of the two, Leopold and Loeb, the Bobby Franks trial, you know, and everything. Uh -huh. And there were 40 people only in his class. But my paternal grandmother was uh, the first woman ever to graduate from the University of Michigan Medical College. Wow. 1888. First woman ever to graduate from that. And, uh, you know, so that she broke that glass ceiling at that time, but she still had a heck of a time actually practicing because the prejudices die so hard, don't they? Well, you well, know what I'm saying? When it, it I, takes forever to get some sort of thing really up and going. I, I do, just like I was blessed with having both male and female mentors when I went into government and politics yeah. and public relations, and uh -huh. there weren't that many female mentors. Uh -huh. I was blessed with both Bella and Shirley. Uh, and Chism, it was Shirley yeah. Chisholm yeah. who uh -huh. always said when they asked her, where does she suffer more discrimination, as an African American uh -huh. or as a woman and she said no question about it as a woman really yeah that is and that was and that was surely those are two big divides but that are I, really relevant well, to the history of mankind in in, actually, in, yeah. in, in the yeah. the Racism women's movement a lot of it grew out of sexism the because it's all yeah. about human rights uh -huh. and civil rights mm -hmm. and that is what women all we want are our civil rights before we started you said that you were so disappointed and you told me about some other friends of your you know who were so disappointed when we didn't get an ERA no that well, was no not not just someone oh who? Buckminster Fuller well Buckminster uh, Fuller <laughs> was maybe the best minded history of mankind Absolutely. in my humble opinion I mean it was something and he wept 
when the ERA well, uh, Equal Rights Amendment was defeated? Well, let me tell you Whip. that there is now legislation yeah. in Congress. Uh -huh. Again, the main sponsor being my friend, my <coughs> colleague, and maybe that's why we're friends, yeah. Carolyn Maloney, yeah, God, well, but yeah, right, many yeah. other good women and men who have signed on to it. Uh, but we is, still don't have an <coughs> ERA, uh -huh. and I don't know in this Congress whether we're going to get why one Why didn't out. that pass? When would that have been? Now, he died in 90, uh, when, oh, what, it, why what, didn't it, what, uh, what Harold, was, Harold, if we could, was spend, we it could was spend a two hour, two hours, not just one it hour. It was close. It though. was close, yeah. but close, but no cigars, yeah, as right, they say. Yeah, right, 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 um, And uh, we, are, we are still at it. But most people, if you did a survey, uh -huh. even of women, yeah. and said, well, you know, do we have an Equal Rights Amendment? They would say, of course. Because they, they can't, yes, people do not know. That's why I am using yeah, your yeah. program right now Good. and every other time Good. to say we still do not have an equal rights amendment. We still have discrimination against women, not as bad as it used to be, but still uh, we have a long way to go. And let me tell you that there are so many areas. When I go and speak uh -huh. at to young women's groups, uh -huh. because now, as I said, we were the second wave, and uh -huh. I was at the tail end of the second wave uh -huh. almost. And then there is, I actually belong to an organization called the Veteran Feminists of America, okay. and most of them call me the kid. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, like but we now have something wonderful called the third wave. Mm -hmm. And that are young women who have come in the 30-somethings and even the 20-somethings mm -hmm. and even, God bless them, the young women who are in college mm -hmm. who never knew that there was a time that they couldn't go if they, if they chose to mm -hmm. and have a procedure done, have an mm -hmm. abortion done. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that it was against the law. That, by the way, that comes to the third button. We've talked about 59 cents. Yeah. Third thing, which is have is a little lapel pin and it's just a gold-plated coat hanger. And yeah, people will come up and yeah. say, oh, are you with the Dry Cleaners Association? Yeah, right. Or what is it about? And then I can explain that before we had Roe v. Wade, we needed coat hangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, had yeah. back alleys and women used yeah. coat hangers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh -huh. I had, I proudly, I, not proudly, but for various reasons, needed to have an abortion. Uh-huh, okay. And mine was performed in a hospital because mm. I knew someone, it was before Roe v. Wade, uh -huh, but uh -huh. I knew someone who would yeah. do that for me legally. Mm -hmm. I was one of the very lucky ones. Mm -hmm. But before there was Roe v. Wade, mm -hmm. there was coat hangers. Yeah. So that's why I say we wear various buttons uh -huh. that say, just like when we were all protesting the Vietnam War. Right, it was horrible. And Spiro Agnew got up when we were all down in Washington on one of the, on one of the, uh, one of the big, big marches where everybody... Were you, had, at the, were you on the I one in, was, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Were you on the one in 67 when Abby Hoffman tried to levitate the uh, uh, Pentagon? Uh, yes, they I was Were you the, in that? I Would you have been in that pen, coterie? I was in that with coterie. The, with the happy pink I knew printer? Abby. I knew yeah, Abby. I, knew, I loved And him. I knew Jerry. Yeah. And, and, uh, Jerry changed a lot. Jerry yeah. and changed. And Joanna, I know Joanna, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, in one of my other favorite protest yeah. buttons, uh -huh. where when we were protesting the war and, and Spiro Agnew got up and said, they're nothing but a bunch of effete intellectual snobs. That's right. He didn't say it. Negative he didn't have the brain, of negativism. But he, you know who wrote most of his speeches? It was Pat Buchanan wrote most Pat of his, most yeah, of his yeah. stuff. Yeah, I can and, believe he advised the, the, the president. And, yeah. but, Within 24 hours, there was a wonderful protest button, mm. which I wore, and it said, Hi, I'm an effete intellectual snob. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. Thank God for humor, right? And, Thank God well, for but humor. But also, that yeah. also, because people who didn't know mm. where that, why are you wearing that? Mm. And then you can explain what Agnew did and why we were down in Washington protesting yeah. and all of the rest. Yeah. So um, it, it, the, these buttons tell, oh, w just like political campaign buttons, and yeah. I could, we could do another whole show about collecting political memorabilia. Yes. Like my favorite. You told me you got, what is that? 
I don't know. Um, we can we can get this on the camera? I don't or? know. If I you don't did, know. You can try, Let's but see. they're going to have a hard time. Okay. If this you're going to hold it a, there for a while. This is a Spiro Agnew Spiro watch. Agnew watch. It is and one of the most valuable it. pieces yeah. of memorabilia. Yeah. And it was actually <laughs> given to me. Well, this first came out after Agnew also made one of his other famous statements yeah. there. He said, once you've seen, once you've seen once, he was going to, uh, he went to uh, South Los Angeles and then he went, I'm sorry, to, to LA, to yeah. Watts, and then he went to the south side of Chicago. And yeah. then they said, well, you really should go see what, Harlem. And he <laughs> said, I don't have to do that. Once you've seen one slum, you've seen them all. <laughs> And so more priceless. Now I you mean, remember you can, more you can't now, do better. now yeah. I, when I tell this story, when I tell it to younger people, yeah. I have to explain who Mort Saul was. Mort Saul was well, you great. and I know who oh, he was. Yeah, but yeah. the way I explain it to younger people yeah. is that he was the John Stewart of his day. Yeah, that's right. The comic. Because yeah. the kid no, but a political mm. com yeah, John Stewart he, oh, and the well, you know uh, and the, Mart, the, the, and, and what and Lenny Bruce was really no, but I, but they didn't yeah. know Lenny Bruce or Mort Saul. Yeah. They know they don't? John John Stewart. Yeah. They know Bill Colbert. Maher. Yeah. They know Steve Colbert. Yeah, and those so are that's all how good. I yeah. explain to them. Yeah. So anyway, after Agnew made the, the, all of these wonderful statements, mm. Mort Saul got up in one of his stand-up acts and he mm. said, Spiro Agnew is so embarrassing that even Mickey Mouse will not wear his Spiro Agnew watch. <laughs> Except there wasn't such a thing as a Spiro Agnew watch. And there was a bright young entrepreneur uh -huh. who started something called the Dirty Time Company, <laughs> DTD. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's how you can tell whether you've got a real one or because it uh -huh. says copyright DTD. Uh -huh. yeah. The Dirty Time Company only had five products, three wristwatches and two Pocket watches, uh. and they sold for two ninety eight, three ninety eight, <laughs> and five ninety eight, uh. and they became the greatest collectible, not only among among people who knew what this was, yeah. and if you look at this picture, you yeah. can see no, it's wearing great. diapers. I and, wish we could show. We can't show because it's, if you take it off, unless I walk it over to the. No, no, you can't walk it. Oh. Get, it would, if you can take it off, e does it come off easily? Sure. Uh, just okay, as a band, here. Now, I'm going to hold it up, and uh, you just keep talking. Uh, okay. And we'll, and anyway, we'll give them, it'll give them time. They may or may not be able to come in tight focus oh, okay. on this on the well, one Well, anyway, camera. they should also focus on the button at yeah, the same we'll time that, that you're wearing. Um, but um, but Don't anyway, try or see. But apparently anyway, they, they can't were, make it work. They, they were, can't uh, make it work. There were Republicans apparently. who thought this was a great... Oh, yeah, yeah. tribute, huh? A tribute yeah, to right. Sparrow yeah. Avenue. Yeah. And actually, that's, um, that's I had one, that. it it broke, and I was I couldn't get another one except for a small fortune, and yeah. they go for a small fortune when... They, it cost me a for, small fortune to you keep this... You want some this, help? You got no, it? I got it okay. in working order. Yeah. Because I w refused to have any of the movements changed, and it was so cheaply made yeah. that in order to fix the movement, you have to use it like a paper clip or something <laughs> and bend it, or a straight pin. I mean, it is... Life is more interesting than anything they can put on the screen. I Ab think, uh, absolutely. What Hitchcock once said, uh, movies are life with the boring parts taken out, but I sometimes think life is more interesting <laughs> than what they put in the films. And well, funny. I you will know? give you another one of my weather you can wonderful do shtick. quotes. You're really funny as well as a political <laughs> But I will also give you one of my more serious quotes about yeah. life, which okay. I use quite often, yeah. um, which was from, I didn't know it was from John Lennon. I had been using this quote for a long time when things don't go <clears> quite the way you want them yeah, to, or right. or or you make a you 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 make a date and then something happens at yeah, the last minute yeah, yeah, yeah. or what have you. Yeah. But the quote is, "Life is what happens when you're busy making plans." Ah, that is interesting. And do you know who said that? I have a that? quote page. I and do you know who, who said that? Who is that? No, I don't know. John Lennon. No kidding. Yeah. Six months before he was shot. Right. 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 And the irony that he said it, and then six months Say later. Say it again. Life is what happens when you're busy making plans. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, that is And true. it's yeah, uh, right. to me that sums up so many things yeah, that right. that 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 happen. Yeah. Uh, well, what do I, maybe we could zero in your uh, democratic 
committee woman, right? Yes. What is that? Where does it fit in? I, and maybe we could talk a little about politics. We're in an election year. Well, right? I thought we were talking politics. Well, we are, sort but of. we were also talking about the past. I, I am the Democratic State Committee woman, the yeah. east side of Manhattan. Okay. And now, how the is New that? York Where Democratic, does that fit into the overall the New York pattern? Democratic, is that not the assembly? Me, or? No, no. The, hmm. New, the New York Dem, the Democratic Party in every state has its state committee, and both, both parties have them. Yeah, okay. Except we're kind of activists. I think <coughs> the Republicans just... I don't know what they do. I haven't met sitting big leather well, chairs whatever. and smoke. But uh, and then we also have the Democratic National Committee. Okay. And oh, yeah. then we also have but the Democratic State Committee really represents all of the elected Democrats in New York State. Oh, okay. And we also at all levels of and government? we are no we represent everybody who is a registered Democrat. Oh, oh, oh we I see. Okay. Advise, yeah. right. We do work with the uh, people who are in the assembly and in the city council yeah, and uh, the local government. Right, right. And we also we US pass re resolution. Well, it you know something. Yeah. There, are a lot of what I do, yeah. I do because. I uh, me, <laughs> I guess. Good but, idea. Yeah. But I mean, in working, but, but of course, we work with members of Congress. We work with we work with our uh, state uh, legislative people. We give them ideas at the last at the last state convention at the last state meeting of the state committee. I put in a resolution about with two of my colleagues, one from the West Side and one from Greenwich Village. Uh -huh. All of us happen to be women uh -huh. against fracking, and we were actually fighting the governor on this one. Uh -huh. But he listens. Uh -huh. One of the good things about our governor is that he listens, yeah. and so he has not passed anything. It was supposed issue, isn't it? fracking yeah. is yeah, a it is, is yeah. a very big issue yeah. because it affects our <laughs> health, it affects our water supply, but it also affects um, from the other side about clean energy, except that this is not clean. Well, we have to do something about about with the price of gas going up again and with with yeah. you know about having yeah. alternate sources of energy. Not but to I am a global great, warming. But yeah. I am yeah. a great believer well I wouldn't call it it's climate change. Climate and you know change, yeah. Al, Al Gore got a bad rap because what he really talked about was climate change. Right. And part of climate change is global warming. Mm -hmm. But it is not just <coughs> this year it's global warming, but yeah. we also have had climate change because they have had in the last month there were hailstorms down south in the southwest. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I so think, you can't yeah. call that warming, mm -hmm. but it is certainly climate change to have hailstorms in in March in uh, Louisiana or yeah. where it was somewhere I don't know if it was Louisiana, but in the southwest. Yeah. I mean it is it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So that's again Sometimes we take a bad rap for a lot of things. We Democrats, we being, oh, you, we oh, being the Democrats. What about what about taking that that the human society? There's some people who think that we contribute to that, and that we are a blight on the planet, which would be much better if we weren't even here because we are so, you know, ignorant and so slow to move in a way that's in keeping with nature's larger pattern. We stand out. We do stand out against the uh, environment in terms of our ability to extend through technology and tools and make the world different than and in an Eden-like sense is the way most of the creatures encounter the world. So we can make the world different. And there are people who think um, things are so uh, so that that we that uh, we are a blight upon the world, the human society. We ought never to have evolved. Well, let, you know, let, there are people who think that way, and you understand. And now we're coming down to where there's a big uh, confrontation, a very huge confrontation going on, on the big on the big scale of man's role in changing the face of the man earth. Man and woman's role. Well, mankind's role. role, yeah, the book, no, it's Person a kind. Let's, let's, uh, you know something, Harold, even you, who are a feminist, still get caught. I'm not a feminist. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. Okay. You okay. believe in equal that. rights. Yeah, sure. You believe in equal rights. I got and another. no discrimination because of gender or color. <laughs> Well, of course. Then you are a feminist. Well, I, okay. Well, I, I'm. 
I see, I, I, it happens to be, I see things a little differently and everything, and I don't think in those terms as it happens. Well, but you, what, Carol, Harold, I will tell you what you just said, in the best of all possible worlds, to quote Candide, yeah. we, we could have the kind of world that you're talking about. Well, but we have to deal right now with the Rush Limbaugh's and the Glenn Beck's of this world. Well, we have to deal with the uh, with the people, <coughs> with the people who don't who don't think that it's okay for me, for health insurance to cover Viagra, but not cover birth control pills. Those are political issues. But they, but the world is political, whether no, we the world like it is or much not. Larger political, than political, whether you say with a capital P or a small p. What's the difference? And even what's even the, I'd be interested. What's the difference? Uh, with a capital P, you're talking about. You're talking about just our political parties and elections, and but yeah. that is what decides what the law, what laws we're going to have, right. and we live in a society of laws. We, um, well, yeah. I mean, we yeah. Bre we break the laws. My God, I've been arrested seven times for various I've things. I've been more than that. Well, but anyway, yeah. But oh, that's well, a we long time ago. We up can up compare the our, yeah. we can we can we can our rap sheets, <laughs> right, our rap sheets <laughs> yeah. and but and, that was and all our for yeah. good causes. Well, yeah. but. Yeah. We say mm. it's for good causes. Mm. The people who yeah. arrested us mm. and the society say no, yeah. that we were breaking the law. Yeah. That's why I say you look at things through a different prism. Otherwise, and that's why the elections that we have and the politics is so important, because there is politics with a small p in what is everything. Well, oh, okay. In now, everything. wait a minute. I would have thought that'd be the big p. Politics and everything. I think the thing that you're talking about, uh, I think everything's interconnected. Everything is interconnected. And I see the I would, I think more, uh, for whatever it's worth, and it doesn't make sense to most anybody, I understand that and everything, but I don't think, I think of male and female functions in universe. There are male and female functions in universe, and all of reality is tensegro. That is right down to the molecular level, right up to human being. There is a difference between men and women. Or there's a, that's that's thinking of it in terms of men and women. There is a but, biological difference other than that. Well, you see, I disagree. I well, think there's a difference. Well, well, that we can talk about. Yeah, no, I not at the level of men and women, but at the level of universe. But there then are, you're talking about a physiological, biological. No. Okay, but I will tell you no, that there physics. is no difference. It's physics. I, I started telling you something before when I speak at to young women's groups or even women, uh, young women and men. Yeah. And I love to speak before young people and do tell you? them about the old days. I'll bet you do. You could days, do stick, girl. The old days. Yeah. And one of the things that they're absolutely in shock is that I tell them that even though I went to a fine women's college, graduated with all kinds of degrees and honors and everything yeah. else, that when they came around interviewing for jobs in yeah. senior year, all they wanted to know is how fast I could type and if I could take shorthand. And you know what I did? Mm. I lied uh, because I had part of the way, besides waiting on tables yeah. and working in the library, yeah. that I worked my way through college was typing other people's term papers yeah. as well as my own. You were good and I learned I uh, was I was a whiz. How fast? 120? I, I don't know. I don't remember because now everybody types. Because <laughs> everybody who uses computers now. Yeah. But remember that's Whiteout? all they wanted to <laughs> that, yeah. well, I, uh, I remember when I got my first Selectric typewriter. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah. but that's all they wanted to know. So I lied. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I spoke five languages and mm -hmm. had all my other degrees. Do, is that true? Not yes, fluently. that was true. Fluently? Well, I no. can speak three or three. At these days, I can probably speak three fluent, besides English. But I got my first job out of fluent. college good, yeah. because I spoke Russian. Uh -huh. and, How did that happen? And How did I you studied speak? I studied it in college. No fooling. No fooling. I made, believe it or not, which I went to a wonderful liberal, I, about a liberal arts education yeah. for everyone. But I actually majored in Russian history and okay. did my graduate work wow. on, okay. on Lenin and the NEP. Wow. Okay. But in yeah. order to, to really 
you reach a point where you have to use source materials. Yeah. So I decided to study Russian. Plus, I wanted to know what my grandmother was always saying. Am I might because I learned people Yiddish. Were Russian? From well, Russia? Jew, uh, they were from actually from Ukraine? Belarus. Belarus. Yeah, Belarus. Okay. Yeah, right, white right. Russia. Yeah, Belarus. Right, 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 That's what Bela is white. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Belly Dome is the Russian White House yeah. where they had all of the, when they had the revolutions right, and what right, have you. Right, yeah. uh, but, um, so I was very lucky because I wanted to work at the UN mm -hmm. and because I, speaking Russian back in the early 60s yeah. when I graduated from yeah. college is the equivalent of knowing Arabic now. Arabic or Chinese? Arabic even more so than Chinese. Yeah, okay. Yeah, or yeah. both. Yeah, but, I understand, I understand but, what you're saying. I think it's, you're I, right. Because yeah. I yeah. was and they had, for the General Assembly, they always hire. I think it was more intense, though. The bipolar world of George Kennan and all that was more intense, and the commies were the identifiable enemy much more strongly with uh, Hoover and COINTELPRO and all that. Oh come than on, now, we I have think. it. We have it now with you with Al Qaeda and you with think, the so and now, with the, Mus the Muslim. The oh, one, please. Oh, so you think that the dialectic, which was uh, the Cold War and all that with Russia. We had, uh, we built up all those atomic weapons to where they became species lethal. The, we, the warheads, and they beat, Soyuz was up there before us. They were ahead of us. But we have a different, but. And that, there was, that was the fight, that was the focus, the Russian. You were well to uh, study the language and be in that thing. But, but you then know, we, you, and I did, you and I did a program once all did about we, the, great, the great, no, but we did one about the great peace march for global nuclear disarmament. Oh, in 82? No, in oh. 80. Six, where I did the PR, traveling all across the country, oh, that with trying Barbara? to stop the testing. Oh no, yeah, that right. Barbara was yeah. after that. Okay. That was when That's we did right. a program Trent, on on, good, on yeah. and El Salvador yeah. and, and Nicaragua yeah, right. and what was going. But we had done a previous program about the Great Peace March. Okay, we also had that on Phil Donahue. Uh, uh, good, yeah. but good that guy, was to yeah. stop nuclear testing uh -huh, and to have uh -huh. the, a nuclear test, which yeah. we eventually got. Yeah. But we now have we have a different kind of. So you of what is going on now. So there, 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 you would have been, uh, you know, in the days of Hoover and COINTELPRO, the enemy du jour, or McCarthy. Remember, you oh, go back absolutely. that far? absolutely. Sure, the I enemy, do. The enemy absolutely. The, uh, is, was the commies. That's, commies, the Marxists, I was, right? Uh, oh, and I you're was, studying Lenin. I was Nep, called, Nep. I was called, I was called many names. Yeah, I'll bet. Including a, uh, I don't know. Un-American. Well, a, 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 mini a commie, before. a commie B, we'll yeah, leave the yeah, word yeah, out, yeah, just yeah, as yeah, I yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. my politics have always been left do you think? But do you think the dialectic is that strongly now where it's us against, against the uh, Islam? Of course. You think it's that strong? Look I don't what, think it's that look strong. Look what went on with yeah. the, the so-called mosque, which wasn't even going to be a yeah. mosque yeah. Uh, uh, down, downtown. As the look what's going jour, on. Huh? That, uh, that's, this is my yeah, feeling. Yeah, no, I can understand. I cannot, you know, I yeah. cannot, but I think that it, it absolutely is. You but know? The, he can, everything, everything, it used to be called political economy. Everything political is informed by economics. And it, Russia was a threat to us. They put. Remember the first beep of, uh, of uh, yeah, what was but, it but, called? Soyuz? But Harold, what was the first satellite that went uh, up? Remember it was, it was, it was Soyuz. Soyuz. Yeah. yeah, that was the first. And the yeah. dog went up, and the yeah. person went up. But, they were but, ahead of but us. But let's talk about. And what they had the atomic bomb, Harold, and they had the hydrogen bomb, and the and the capacity. But Harold, to deliver. they that, were a threat to us. But that they. A that, real threat. That is then. Let's talk about now. Okay, let's talk let's about, talk that. about right. what's going on okay. right okay. now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because well, there are all kinds of threats to us, different kinds of threats, yeah. insidious threats yeah. to our civil rights, to our human rights, right. to whether we are men or women. I do. I, I think it's year one. No, I mean, we're in a time. Ajit Asimov, who you admire, so did I, said, we've been here 200,000 years as a species. We're all African. We have, we've got 10,000 generations, and this generation, now he's talking this 100-year period or something like that, he said it, program we did. This is, it's hard to say, probably all generations have thought that kind of way in a way, but this generation, when you and I talk and are active and engaged and everything, this is the defining generation. There's something existentially new out of history 
And James Joyce had Daedalus say, history is a nightmare. It's been nothing but injustice in terms of the mass of the people under everything. But every which story. generation are you talking about? The, well, are you talking the, the, about I don't ours? want to be specific. Yes, at this time. So it, he said this time, and it would be some others, uh, Wilson and some others, that this is not your normal time that this is a time of existential alteration in terms of the evolution of consciousness. And I think that's the case. So we were blessed or cursed to be born into a time of like qualitative, not quantitative, you know, steady state. We were born into a time of qualitative transformation as there has been characteristic of the whole evolutionary process of which we are a part. I think that kind of thing is uh, blowing in well, the wind now. And the political systems are reifying institutional structures that are being outdated by our extended technological capability of uh, altering the world context that is now reaching exponential proportions and rushing in a world that promises either we, the, the leading thing, we got weapon systems that have led that technological extension, and they became species lethal about 1970. But we no, have. No, species, do you understand? Well, yes, we, but we were also be, we have. We couldn't do that but, in history. But, but while we had weapons and we had atomic weapons and they were going to. Right now, we have on the news this morning, I just heard about, <coughs> about in Afghanistan, a man who walked up to a group of soldiers who were in in a park taking pictures of children uh -huh. and giving out things, and he blew himself up, what, so, killing yes. three American soldiers. And? What does what, that mean? What does that mean? What does is that mean? Is that no. a lethal? People are becoming lethal weapons. No, that's we not have, lethal. That's not, no. Uh, uh, well, no, you didn't hear what I said, apparently. We are in danger if you have... No, we are in danger of stopping the evolution of consciousness led by the homo sapiens species because in order to have a realpolitik world where the men can conquer the women, the black, white can conquer the blacks, the, they can conquer the Indians, strength, weapon systems has led the extension of our technological but capability. But we have different Haven't kinds they? of weapons systems now. We have, and you, you know, if you want to go back to 9-11, to where a where an air a commercial airplane four commercial airplanes became lethal weapons because of the people who commandeered them well, and they became lethal weapons there no, are no, different no, but kinds a, of no, lethal weapons in the second world and war our, now and, you don't want to listen right go ahead, i'm listening i'm making a point that has nothing to do with an individual killing another one that's been going on forever or the strong conquering the weak or, or enslaving or killing them if they want if they win, they can kill them if they want to. They can do whatever they want when there's no law or anything. But what I'm talking about is the abstract technological capability existing within the homo sapiens species world that they've created where the weapons that exist, in unlike as recently as the Second World War, we were trying to kill each other as hard as we could. The Nazis had this crazy thing going about the Jews, and then we did, and we bombed Dresden, firebombed women and children, okay. and we knew we were doing it, but we were impotent at the level of species. We are no longer that way since about 1970. We have weapon systems that if they were to be unleashed, they exist. They exist, and if there was some uh, irrational thing where they were unleashed, it would be the end of the Homo sapiens and species. And what do you think? Couldn't if do that the, ever. And if the ice caps keep on melting, no, okay. And if and if the atmosphere, and if we continue to have climate change, <laughs> and if we continue to have poisoning the waters and all, right. might that not also be the end of the Homo I don't think there's the anything. No, I don't think there's anything that could do it. Even an asteroid could be deflated. It isn't anything that nature well, can do would be species lethal. What the nature would do, if I could, and if we get into global warming and you get 30 foot rise and you had to be on the 10th floor of a building in New York City, and you got, it would create social political conditions. Or if some of these clowns that I see on the Republican side of things get in, I mean, it could lead to conditions that would lead to such con such angst and such uh, inoperableness of the system and so forth that would lead to the, the only thing that would lead to the end of the species. There's nothing natural. 
Nothing. There's nothing natural that could do that. The only thing that could do it are the weapons that were built at our own hands, and they continue to exist. But the weapons... Do you hear there, it? I, I hear you, but I you disagree think it's true? with you. I say that there are other weapons, not necessarily bombs, not necessarily... I'm not talking just bombs. You're talking... Uh, no, uh, you're any, talking about the weapons. I am not talking weapon. about weapon systems. I am not talking about there are other kinds of weapons. Ignorance is a weapon. There True. are so many, Absolutely. and hatred is a weapon. Right. I mean, I don't want to sound like now. No. They're, now everybody's listening, and they're going to say, "Ah, bleeding heart liberal." Well, you know something. I am a proud. Breed. I don't think liberal is a dirty word. Uh, not Just like I don't. I don't think politician is a dirty word okay. or politics. Yeah. And the yeah. only way we're going to be able to do something mm -hmm. about all of this mm -hmm. is by stopping to talk about the great global scheme of things and everything and Beyond actually global. get involved you, you know you, something you, if you want to get involved mm. then you get involved you get involved in what you or you are saying uh, whether it's politics with a p or with a small p or a that capital was yours. p I couldn't quite or understand you the do something uh, because there is politics in everything yeah. there is politics right now at MNN and who gets the studios and yeah. who gets the time that's <clears> politics <throat> mm -hmm. there is politics in our well obviously we, we see that in, in the school systems. Mm -hmm. There is politics in every corporate entity. There's politics in the church. Who, <coughs> becomes, who gets raised up and who... There is politics in, in, my, in my synagogue. That there has to do with the politics. allocation That's of, with a small What is the dictionary definition of power? It has to do it with has allocation to do with, of power. It has to do... Power with, relationships, right? It has to do with power relationships. Yeah. It has to do with, with, uh, with philosophical relationships. Well, it there has you get to do, into a different realm, but but you, yeah. It's all involved. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is Mm -hmm. Again, I, I sound like I'm walking thesaurus sometimes. I'm giving you all these quotes. No, you're but great. I was there in 19... Quotes are great. But I was there in 1960 yeah. when I heard John Kennedy say right. at the Boston Garden uh -huh. and one of his speeches, because uh -huh. I was... I founded the Young Dems at Wheaton, Good which was a rib you, rock Republican you. school. Good. But I... Did you? Good for yeah. you. Uh, yeah. uh, but I heard, and I heard John Kennedy say, Politics is not a dirty word. Uh -huh. And a lot of people will say to me, you politician, like it's a dirty word. Uh -huh. Okay, But unless, I'll go back to good old Eldridge Cleaver again, yeah. because this is what he meant. Yeah. We can talk about all the terrible things uh -huh. that are going on, whether it's in Albany, or whether it's at City Hall, or whether it's in Washington, or in any state house of any other state, uh -huh. or in Ann Arbor, uh -huh. or anywhere in Sacramento, wherever yeah, you want, yeah. or we can try to do something about it. Uh -huh. And as Eldridge Cleaver said, mm -hmm. if you're not part of the solution, yeah. you're part of the problem. Yeah, right. Which is why, as a state committee person, I try to get people to sign petitions, to get people to be able to run for public office. Good, yeah. That's what I do. It's yeah. nitty gritty stuff. Yeah. It's getting Good, out, it's it's in the getting out, yeah, right. it's getting out okay. the vote. Yeah. It's getting people to vote. Let's we, get, this great yeah. democracy, have one of the lowest votes voting percentages of any of any country Congress in the world. Congress now has a rating of approval that's the lowest in the history of the country. I think it's 8% approval. The Congress of the United States. It seems dysfunctional. You've got all this Well, stuff then over. do something no, about yeah, it, Harold. But, well, okay, but I'm just saying that's true, isn't it? Isn't then that true? do something about it. Why is it when they it? take polls in Congress? Uh, they take polls. They, uh, you want to know what a Stowe poll is? just resigned. She I saw her the other night. I saw her yeah. the other night. You know, but, but that's you true, isn't it? Yes, and yeah. you want to know? Why? Because the people who get active uh -huh. and get involved are the far right, mm or the far left. Yeah. And having been from the far left, but now trying to be more in the middle. Yeah, and okay. I get yeah. I get beat up on mm -hmm. by, by some of my friends yeah. on the far left yeah, who say too. who yeah. say hey, who say you co opted to yeah, use a sixties right. term. The, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Mm. I believe and I'm saying it again the yeah. third time, Eldridge mm. Cleaver, mm. you have to be part of the okay, problem. Okay, why do we only got a couple minutes about left? It. What about we got let's let's instead of getting off on the I can talk about the I'm over in the philosophical yeah. and I see everything 
everything in different ways. And I'm ways. sorry to be beating up on you, You're Harold. not beating up at all. <laughs> Perfectly all right. We're old friends. There's nothing at all. Yeah. But the election coming up. I was surprised. I was, was at a meeting with you. We were there, and Carol and Maloney, and uh, uh, Mr. Um, um, Jerry Nadler. Jerry Nadler, and that fellow Foster, good guy. Yes. And everything. And I was surprised because I said, I heard these people, they're political uh, aware and everything, that they think the election of president and, you know, across the country, it's going to be very, very close. Now, I've been looking at some of the shenanigans of the people going to the Republican system and everything, and it just seems to me that there would be no question that Mr. Obama is going to win in a walk. They're such clowns. I mean, it's so absurd. And yet they thought, political pros, that it was going to be very close. Ask me what I think. Do you want to know what I think? Yes. I think it is going to be extremely close, and I think Why? How can it be? Because I will tell you why. Okay. Do you remember the old New Yorker cover? Uh, Was it Steinberg, William Steinberg, which had a New Yorker's view of the world? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's New York. Yeah, in the West Coast. And California. And then there is this little teeny line, everything in between, yeah. and just as small, the rest of the world. I yeah. think it showed Russia, China, <laughs> yeah, right. and yeah. South America. Yeah. I don't even know if it showed Africa. That is a New Yorker's. Well, let me tell you, yeah. Harold Channer, yeah. there is a, because uh, I have traveled, yeah, right. a wonderful Woody Guthrie song, you know, uh, this I'm country. I'm a traveling man. But no, you know. traveled across this country from shore to shore, shining yeah. shore, yeah. and it's often made me wonder about the things I've, I've heard and so on, okay? Uh, oh, and I didn't know and that uh, well, okay. was great. it's a song called yeah. "The Banks Are Made of yeah, Marble." Okay, okay. but as and, to the election, and I have traveled, or I have also. It's also there are some lines in this land is your land yeah. that go, and there is a big, wide country yeah. west of the Hudson, yeah, yeah. south of Staten Island, even mm. though sometimes I think that Staten Island is a you part of that. You don't have to that. go on, we understand. Okay. Why and is it going to be close? And your view, because yeah. your view is the Steinberg view, a New Yorker's view. Well, but I don't know. But let me a, also an point. intelligent view. Uh, now, let me, no. You, no, I mean, it really seems that absurd. that is the New Yorker, because That's there not is absurd. It's a big, There's an anti-intellectualism There abroad. is a big wide. I have spent time in Texas. I have spent time <laughs> in the South, not just getting arrested down there, Her but thing also Ms. spent did time the other day was in, in the South. Yeah. Well, there was yeah. actually yeah. Um, there were there was a, there was the Selma march, which Carolyn and a group of co- members of Congress went went on. It's commemorating the Selma. Yeah, the Selma yeah, March. Right. But I will tell you that they think different from the way we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, okay. And there is, and because otherwise we wouldn't have had 83 tea partiers from all over yeah. the country elected to Congress. Yeah. We wouldn't have had, and they come from all over. Over. So what you're saying is that, that you think it's going to be, you really seriously think it's going to be close. I seriously what are they, think okay. I, I have a hard time understanding So it. close. I think that one of the things, but the this morning, again, I watch the morning talk shows every, and I watch the Sunday talk shows, yeah, right. and the Republicans, some of them, the thinking Republicans, and really Romney is now saying, no, there shouldn't be a gender gap, and, and women are more concerned about the economy, and it may be that that they are trying to shorten that gender gap by but we're not going to let them forget about what they did no, and not where are, are the, the women, women. exactly yeah. and that's they will why be in the this is not Democrat. a political this is not just a cause button as we call it yeah. but it is a political statement yeah. that I am making I think right that, now. Good for you. And that's why I pinned it on you also. Yeah, I, I'm glad so to have it. And I, I really think statement. that's good. I don't see how that can be anything but redound against a very important constituency. The women of this country are going to be voting against the idea that, you know, the, all their birth uh, uh, as, uh, choices are being taken away of, by them. Mix- They're going to lose votes and also the Latinos. As the, at the risk of of mixing church and state, which yeah. I shouldn't do. We only but got as about a minute bl- left. As my Round blessed up quick. grandmother yeah. used to say, God bless from him. your no, from, from your, your lips 
to, to God's God. yeah. ears. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Yeah. So I will, uh, well, that's Grandma's quote. Now, yeah, I'm right. giving you just another Grandma, quote. I heard it. I heard I'm it from you my Grandma, too. Also. Yeah, I know the words, but, but yeah. I am just, my final words are that Do you quick. don't take anything for granted, and you get, get involved. involved. All right, get involved, and if you want to get involved with one of the good members who are helping in that, it's Trudy Mason, been our president. Have your talk. We could talk for hours and hours, and we're going to be in touch and so forth. Thanks a lot. I am of a, uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, year, year coming up the election. Thank you very, very much for viewing Trudy. Thanks a lot for all your good work and for coming in. Great pleasure. Thank and you. And in the audience, please stay tuned. We'll be coming back again tomorrow, but that's it for now. And Trudy, thanks a lot for everything. Thank you, Harold. Okay. Now, um, Okay, I guess we sit there. So I, uh, I got. You know, there was one quote that I heard this morning. That I got I quotes wanted, all over. No, my no, page. that I wanted to bring a guy by the name of oh God, what was his name? John, who worked in the White House for six months, was called a lefty commie, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Was called out by people and has just written a book. And he said, unfortunately, even with the Obama people, we've gone from Hopi to mopey to dopey. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I should have I should have said that too, well, but I couldn't going, get everything. But it's just okay. I guess I just Harold. Have to, I'm hollering at you. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you about getting involved. Yeah. Yeah.